Setuban means formation of a bridge. In this asana, the posture of your body becomes like a bridge. This asana is also called Chatushpadasana. Lie down on your back with a comfortable distance between your legs. Place both your palms on the floor in such a way that they are facing towards the sky. This asana is called Shavasana. Now, join both your legs. Bend your legs and bring them close to your pelvis. Hold your ankles firmly with your hands. Now breathe in slowly and lift your pelvis as much as possible so that your body resembles the shape of a bridge. Ensure that your head and shoulders are on the floor and knees and legs are in one line. In this final pose, you can give support to your waist with your hands if you want. Stay in this pose for 10 to 30 seconds while breathing in and out normally. Setu Bandhasana strengthens the muscles of your lower back. This asana stretches the internal organs of your stomach to improve the digestive process and giving you relief from constipation. Setu Bandhasana helps improve cardiac functions. If you are suffering from ulcer or hernia, then you should refrain from doing this asana. Pregnant women should do this asana with utmost care and under expert supervision. After staying in the Setu Bandhasana pose for 10 to 30 seconds, while releasing your breath slowly, bring your pelvis down to the floor. Release your ankles and come back and relax in the Shavasana pose. Doing Setu Bandhasana regularly will help you to overcome depression and anxiety. Nadi Shodan Nadi Shodan is also known as alternate nostril breath regulation. The main characteristic feature of this form of yogic practice is alternate breathing through left and right nostrils without or with retention of breath. To do Nadi Shodan, you have to sit down in the Sukhasana posture, which is a meditative posture. Instead of Sukhasana, Nadi Shodan can also be performed in any other meditative postures like Padmasana, Swastikasana, or Vajrasana. Those who are unable to sit on the floor can perform it while sitting in a chair. While sitting in Sukhasana posture, ensure that your spine is straight, head upright, both your palms are on knees and eyes closed. To keep your spine straight, you may also take the support of a wall to sit upright. Now, take some deep breaths and keep your body in relaxed position. Before starting the practice of Nadi Shodhan, let us first identify the fingers of your hand. Thumb, index finger, middle finger, ring finger, and little finger. Now, to bring your left palm into Dhyana Mudra, touch your thumb and index finger to make a circular shape and keep your middle, ring, and little finger open. Now, to bring your right hand in the Nasagra Mudra, fold and close the middle and index finger. Keep the thumb, ring, and little finger open. Now place the thumb of your right palm, which is in a Nasagra Mudra, on your right nostril, and breathe in from the left nostril. Then close the left nostril with the ring and little finger. Open the right nostril and breathe out. Now breathe in through your right nostril. Then close it with your thumb and breathe out through your left nostril. 
This is one cycle of Nadi Shodan Pranayama, or alternate nostril breath regulation. Repeat the cycle five times. In the beginning, you will probably take the same amount of time to breathe in as you will to breathe out. However, it is important to practice breathing out very slowly and in such a way that you take double the amount of time breathing out as you take to breathe in. Keep your breathing deep, slow, steady and regulated in the same ratio. The main purpose of Nadi Shodan Pranayama is to purify the Nadis which are principal channels to carry energy, thus nourishing the whole body. This is very beneficial for cardiac patients. Nadi Shodan helps to elevate cough-related ailments. Regular practice of Nadi Shodan Pranayama increases tranquility and concentration. It also reduces stress and anxiety levels to bring you peace of mind. Dhyana, or meditation, is an act of continuous contemplation. Dhyana mainly involves three things. Unawareness of external objects and internal state. Unbroken awareness of the object on which the mind is fixed. And effortless prevention of other mental modifications. Dhyana helps you to find peace and internal harmony. Sit down in the Padmasana posture, which is a meditative posture. Apart from Padmasana, Dhyana can be done in any other meditative postures, like Sukhasana or Vajrasana. Those who cannot sit on the floor can practice Dhyana while sitting in chair. While sitting in the Padmasana posture, ensure that your spine is comfortably straight. Arms and shoulders are relaxed. Head is upright and eyes are closed. You may take the support of the wall to keep your spine straight. Now, to get your hands in Dhyana Mudra, ensure the fingers are touching one another in a relaxed manner. Now, bring your left palm near your lower abdomen region and let it rest on your left leg. Next, rest your right palm above your left palm. This is called Dhyana Mudra. Ensure that the whole body is relaxed and comfortable. Draw awareness to your body from head to toes. This will help you to draw the attention inwards and away from external distractions. Now, become aware of your breathing, inhalation and exhalation. Make it deep and slow. Continue this process till the breathing becomes minimal. Without concentrating on anything in particular, maintain a mild focus between the eyebrows and continue to be conscious of your breathing. Now, watch your thoughts. Try to stay with positive and pleasurable thoughts. As you progress in dhyana, your mind will start calming down and your mental activity will reduce and thoughts may dissolve completely. You will feel totally relaxed, contemplated, and stress-free. Dhyana, or meditation, is the most important and an integral part of yoga practice. Breathing in and out normally, try to sit in this state as long as possible. Dhyana rejuvenates both body and mind, helps to improve concentration, and aids behavioral modification. Dhyana keeps you away from negative emotions. It helps to eliminate anger, fear, depression, anxiety, and develop positive emotions. It helps you attain inner peace. It increases one's memory, willpower, and clarity of thought. It helps you become more positive and productive. Dhyana improves the quality of your life. Regular practice of Dhyana keeps your mind calm and quiet and leads you towards self-realization, which is the goal of yoga practice. 
Surya Namaskar, Surya or Sun, is a source of energy for all living beings inhabiting Earth. Surya Namaskar helps in the harmonious development of our body, keeping our mind focused and sharpening our intelligence. Surya Namaskar is considered to be important for our spiritual development. Surya Namaskar consists of a set of eight yogic postures performed in a sequence of 12 steps. Practicing it at the time of sunrise and sunset is considered to be most beneficial. Stand straight with both the feet together without drooping your shoulders. Ensure that your arms are by the side of the body and your chin is parallel to the ground. Balance the body equally on both the feet. This is Samastiti. To do the first step, while inhaling, bring the palms in front of the chest and join them together in the Namaskara Mudra. This is called Pranam Asana. Now exhale. Second step. While breathing in slowly, stretch your body from waist up. Raising both your hands up above your head, bend your head and waist backwards. Keep your legs straight. This asana is called Hasta Uttanasana. Now for the third step. Slowly breathe out and bend your body forward till both palms touch the floor on either side of your feet. Remember that while bending down, both your arms and head are together. This asana is called Padhastasana. Fourth step. In this step, while taking a deep breath, take your right leg back and rest your knee on the floor. Ensure that the right leg is on your toes. Knee of your left leg is at an angle of 90 degrees. Both your palms are on the floor. Your hips are down and the chin is up. This is called Ashwasanchala Asana. In the fifth step, while breathing out, take your left leg back in such a way that it's in line with your right leg. Ensure that your hands and shoulders are in a straight line and your shoulders, back and hips are also in a straight line. This asana is called Santulan Asana. In this position, slowly breathe in. Sixth step, exhale slowly. Keep both your knees on the floor at the same time and also place your chest and forehead on the floor. Ensure that your hips are up and your elbows are close to your body. This asana is called Shastang Namaskara because eight parts of your body, namely both the toes of your feet, both the knees, both the palms, chest and forehead are in contact with the floor. Remember that the body weight is equally distributed on all these eight parts. Now for the seventh step, while breathing in, take your pelvis down and slide your head and chest forward, and lift the upper section of your body till the navel. Ensure that the toes of your feet are pointing outwards and the legs are straight. This asana is called Ujjang Asana. Eighth step, while slowly breathing out, Take your toes inwards. Raise your hips up to the point so that your body takes the shape of a mountain. Ensure that both your legs are straight, palms on the floor, and head is in between your arms. Try to touch your heels to the floor. This asana is called Parvata Asana. For the ninth step, Bring your hips down and while breathing in, bring your right leg forward. Keep the knee of your left leg on the floor and go back to Ashwasanchalan Asana. Tenth step. In this step, bring your left leg also forward and while breathing out, come back to Padhasnasana. Eleventh step. While breathing in slowly, raise your body 
Take both your hands up and go back to the Hasta Uttanasana. Ensure that while coming up, your arms and head come up at the same time. Twelfth step. While slowly breathing out, stand straight again in Pranam Asana. Now repeat the whole sequence with your left leg. Surya Namaskar increases the capacity of your lungs. Surya Namaskar improves metabolism and is found to be very useful in the management of diabetes. Surya Namaskar regulates the secretions of endocrine glands. Surya Namaskar helps to manage your weight and helps to strengthen your spine and back muscles. People suffering from high blood pressure should take precautions while doing Surya Namaskar. People suffering from hernia and peptic ulcer should avoid doing Surya Namaskar. Patients suffering from sciatica, cervical spondylitis, and also acute arthritis should avoid doing Surya Namaskar. Women should avoid doing Surya Namaskar during their monthly menstrual cycle and also during pregnancy. Regular practice of Surya Namaskar helps in detoxification of your body.